Thank you, it's true. I'm actually celebrating another milestone in my life. Uh, recently, my student loan debt just turned 18 years old. <laughs> so I think legally that means it should have to pay itself. <laughs> I, I think, and I know it's controversial, but I think we can all agree that $10,000 is like the hand job of student loan forgiveness. It's not gonna change my life, but I'll take it. I know they're not gonna totally cancel student loan debt. I just keep sending uh, emails to the White House. I'm like, look, here's a suggestion. I think if you have a degree in psychology or related field, but as an adult, you keep getting into toxic relationship after toxic relationship, student loans forgiven. <laughs> you clearly didn't learn what you were supposed to learn. <laughs> My therapist is always doing these exercises with me. She's like, you have to reframe negative thoughts. You know, she's like, Rachel, you've probably heard people say things like when life hands you lemons, make lemonade, or every dark cloud has a silver lining. She's like, why don't you try one? I said, when you're codependent, you're never alone. <laughs> She thought I had a love addiction for a while, which love addiction is the same thing as codependency, but if you call it an addiction, religion can profit from it. <laughs> I, okay, I am an atheist, which means I'm still a good person. I just don't know why. <laughs> oh. A love addiction, you're not really addicted to love. You're addicted to the chemicals in your brain that fire off when you get into a new, often very toxic relationship. Okay, so I think we should stop calling it a love addiction, okay? It's like saying you're addicted to coffee, but you just can't stop blowing the barista. <laughs> not the root of the problem, you know? But as an adult, I'm trying to be a better person, more honest. I started dating someone new. I was honest about the love addiction. He's like, I don't know, kind of freaks me out. I think we should slow it down or maybe just break it off. And I was like, hey, you can relax. It's not like I'll ever actually love you. <laughs> it's reframing negative thoughts. Okay. I don't know, I am a jealous person, which I know is not favorable, but I do think me being jealous is the main thing that has prevented me from joining a cult. Seen the documentaries, you know, a cult leader is just one toxic boyfriend with a little more ambition. <laughs> it's like, I could get down with it, but too many other bitches. I just <laughs> can't do it. Um, I know, like, I don't judge what people do, but I do think if you're in an open relationship and on a dating app, a little arrogant. <laughs> That's like having a kid on purpose. <laughs> okay, you just think you have it all figured out. <laughs> that letting this extra person is, isn't gonna ruin the whole thing. Okay, I've upset a swingers meetup group. Apparently. <laughs> it happened once before, I have to be careful. I started dating a guy who referred to himself as my daddy. Yeah, I laughed harder than you're supposed to laugh <laughs> when a person says that. And the reason I laughed is because he's younger than me. That you're like prequel to daddy, okay? That's, he also has a little kid. I'm like, how are you gonna be a daddy and a daddy? <laughs> okay, look, I was like, I just have to get used to it. I've never called anyone that before. So I've been calling him Dada. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't like the jokes a lot. Uh, my young daddy was mad at me. So he was like, what does daddy have to do for you to take me seriously? I was like, you could leave. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Um, my actual daddy uh, did pass away recently of old age. It's okay, uh, it made our relationship stronger. <laughs> and, and as I was processing it in therapy, I realized, spoiler alert, I tend to date men with the same toxic traits as my father. And my therapist said, it's because you're letting your father off the hook. It means if all men do it, it's not bad. Therefore, your dad's not bad. And she said, you have to stop letting your father off the hook. And I was like, look, I want to keep him on the hook. But he's do not resuscitate. <laughs> You know when you get those spoof calls, like at a number that looks like someone you know? Like I got one of those uh, for him, like after he died and everybody was like, oh my God, like maybe he's trying to contact you from beyond. 
I was like, he would never do that. <laughs> My dad was also an atheist. If there was anything he did not believe in, it was God, ghosts, and calling to admit he was wrong. <laughs> Uh, pretty sure my dad was a narcissist. We know what that is now, right? It's a word we've been hearing a lot in social media. Everybody knows what a narcissist is. You know, like 2016, we started saying it more. I'm not really sure why. Um, like everybody knows one. And like I got naturally, I got freaked out. I was like, oh my God, what if, you know, what if I'm a narcissist? And my therapist was like, Rachel, if you're worried about being a narcissist, it means you're not a narcissist. And I was like, I am pretty sure there should be a better assessment for that. <laughs> like, I can't just be like, whoa, had a wild night last night. I'm worried I might have chlamydia. So I guess I'm okay, right? Because I'm worried about it. Like, I don't think it works that way. Uh, I, do, uh, I do think I got uh, ADHD passed down from my dad. I found that out that I had it late in life. My doctor was like, I think you need to get tested for this. And I was like, I don't think I need that. I'm in my 30s. You know, and she said, actually, ADHD is very underdiagnosed in adult women. And I was like, well, anything for gender equality. <laughs> sure, let's break the glass ceiling. Give me the test, you know? And I had to call a specialist for that. She said, what do you need? And I said, my doctor wants you to test me for ADHD. And she said, do you think that you have ADHD? And I said, is this the test? <laughs> This is how easy it's been to get Adderall this entire time, <laughs> you know? And I did, I took all the tests, I 100% have it, and it's weird to find out you actually need a drug you used to abuse recreationally. <laughs> I used to borrow Adderall from my friends so I could focus on drinking longer. <laughs> People are always like, that must have been so hard for you to learn, like, late in life that you had ADHD, you know, with school and work. And I'm like, it is, but no one ever talks about how it affects your romantic life. Like, I can't keep up with dirty talk at all. You know, uh, someone said my name during sex once. Passionate romantic thing to do. He was like, oh, Rachel. I was like, what? <laughs> it's not enough we're doing this. We have to have an entire conversation. You know, and okay, and I don't yuck anyone's yum, but like, why is it a staple of dirty talk to give each other our genitals? You know what I mean? Like, you're a pussy, you know, the, the thing. Like, why do we do that? Um, my ex used to do it. He would give me his dick, like, verbally. You know, he'd be like, yeah, that's your dick. You ride that dick. You deserve it. Like, that's a little intense, you know? The way I think of genitals are like kids. Like, I already have one of my own. I'm not ready for another one right now. <laughs> They're pretty expensive, you know. And the thing is, I found out he was cheating on me, which is really fucked up because it means not only is he a liar, he's also a regifter. <laughs> okay. I think 69ing is dumb. I know, I said it. Um, why do we still do this to people we supposedly care about and or want to impress, you know? Like, and someone said one time, they're like, people don't like it when you say that because it sounds like you're saying you don't like sucking dick. And I'm like, whoa, hold the phone, calm down. I like sucking dick, it's great. But do you want me to do a good job? <laughs> Think about it. Like, you're trying to distract me from a thing I like with a thing I love. <laughs> That's like asking a white person to give a speech at a wedding and in the middle of the speech, the DJ starts playing Don't Stop Believing by Journey. I'm Rachel Pogletto, thank you.